Yes, my name's Toby. Um, I'm the uh, puppetry director and puppet co-designer for Pinocchio at the National Theatre. Um, uh, Audrey uh, plays Jiminy Cricket, uh, does the voice and is one half of the puppeteering team, and James is the other half of the puppeteering team. Um, our show is quite unique, um, very near the, um, sort of the beginning of the inception of the show, that uh, it was decided that Pinocchio would be the only sort of human on stage and everybody else would be a puppet. So characters like Geppetto and Stromboli are all 12 foot high puppets, uh, so that the scale is really shifted in Pinocchio's favour and so the audience kind of see the world through Pinocchio's eyes. Um, and Jiminy Cricket ori originally was a bit of a sort of question mark, it's such a kind of a, a sort of iconic character, really. It's sort of, you know, in the kind of Disney branding, uh, Jiminy is kind of part of the theme park branding. It's on the beginning of DVDs. He's kind of pretty uh, essential to that kind of um, image. And so there was a lot of questions as to how loyal we should be to the kind of original animated film or how much we should kind of go in another direction. Um, and I suppose I was really keen to see if we could kind of have our cake and eat it, really. Um, the first few drafts of the script had the character being very much more insect-like. It referenced the character having more arms um, than just the kind of, uh, the sort of two, two arms, two legs that the Disney character has. There was no reference to the character wearing clothes or a little top hat like it does in the film. So it, it, it sort of felt right to go kind of more insect. So uh, it's worth saying as well that Jiminy is female in our version, yes. hence Audrey, um, uh, which came uh, sort of brilliantly uh, out of the development process, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, shortly. So initially, I kind of began to yeah, go back and look at the kind of uh, original source material, um, lots of the kind of original concept drawings for Jiminy, um, different expressions, um, and just began to kind of immerse into what creative process led Disney um, to end up with Jiminy the way uh, he looks in the film. Um, I got quite obsessed by his proportions as well. Um, uh, as you'll see later on, if, if the proportions are out, he ends up looking a bit more like a grasshopper, not a cricket. Um, so I quite liked the sort of three heads high kind of vibe. Um, and so the final puppets ended up sort of closer towards that. So my first drawing in my sketchbook, which I think was while someone was having a meeting and was being quite important and I have a very bad habit for doodling <laughs> during, during people talking but that's uh, you normally when the good stuff happens um, was yeah it was very much kind of insect uh, six legs um, had backwards knees on this one um, and a little sort of the wings hanging down like a little coattail uh, like the character has in the film um, but sort of keeping the kind of nose little kind of old man kind of mouth um, that the character has from the uh, animated film. I felt like, I was, in my head when I pictured Jiminy, I thought like, oh, he's got like a little green pea head and he's got that sort of little, mm, little pinched mouth. Um, so I thought keeping that is quite a nice nod uh, to the original. And got obsessed with the shape of his head and started drawing it from all different angles. Whether the antennae go forward, whether they go back. Um, there's lots of animated movies, other animated, mov other animated movies with insects in. I didn't want Jiminy to look like uh, uh, she was from uh, any of those. Um, so various kind of little details, eye proportion. If they've got too big, she looked like a fly. If she looked too small, she looked like a sort of human version of a bug. Various different things. Um, so Pinocchio was in development for a number of years, and the National Theatre has this amazing building called the National Theatre Studio, um, which is, uh, sort of incorporates the new work department, and shows that are being uh, pitched, they're not even commissioned yet, uh, get developed in this building. And so that's where scripts are drafted, it's where workshops are held with actors and directors, and where you sort of uh, pitch the shows to the National Theatre. And Pinocchio was sort of still being commissioned, per se. It hadn't, it hadn't been given the full kind of green light. Um, and so we did, uh, I did three development workshops there, um, deciding on the scale of the bigger puppets, making a giant cardboard Geppetto, and then that turned into a foam one, and then eventually it sort of evolved through. And in the second workshop, the big sort of question we'd all been avoiding was, how's Jiminy Cricket going to work? Um, is it going to be an actor? In, in my head, as soon as someone said that, I was like, oh, someone in a big lime green kind of onesie with some light <laughs> green offers on. Um, uh, you know, how is that going to work? Is it, yeah, is it an actor in a costume? Is it objects from Geppetto's workshop that the fairy kind of conjures together to be an insect? Or is it a puppet character? Um, and I, being a massive puppet nerd since I was six and making puppets things, I was like, if Jiminy Cricket isn't a puppet, I've not done my job right. Uh, let's kind of go for it. Um, and so we were casting this development workshop um, 
And uh, in those kind of situations, it's always quite nice to have a mix of people you have and haven't worked with. Um, and in the case of puppetry, I'm always a big fan of going right and we need people who've had experience. So no one is learning on the job over five days how to puppeteer something as complicated as Jiminy Cricket. If ultimately the decisions about that process are going to be made in those five days, let's have some kind of common ground. Um, Audrey and I have done a number of projects together, but the main one being um, the Elephantum adaptation of a children's book um, at the National. Uh, and James and I have done far too many things together. Uh, <laughs> Light Princess at the National and Little Shop of Horrors in Manchester, yes. um, Running Wild, lots of, yeah, too many things. Um, and so it was really exciting that actually these guys, we'd had puppetry experience together, that they could kind of hit the ground running. Um, so we made a prototype, uh, which you can see here uh, was an upside down plastic bleach bottle. Um, it was full sort of Blue Peter making mode. Um, and some plastic plumbing pipe and cardboard and polystyrene for the head. It was really quickly thrown together um, to sort of try out the ideas. And so I think the idea was that we would run a scene with the puppet, we'd run the same scene with an actor, and we'd run the same scene with sort of objects or a kind of abstracted thing on the actor's arm and see which one people related to the most. Um, thankfully, we started with the puppet because we never needed to try the other two because people were <laughs> ludicrously spellbound, which was really, really brilliant. It, is, it remains one of my favorite days of my career, people's response to this puppet in the room. Um, and the work these guys did in, I don't know, you sort of had probably half, two half days and then we ended up showing the scene yeah, to people. Yeah, and it wasn't always our primary focus either, was it? Some <laughs> things going on, so you yeah. sort of get thrown this sort of puppet and go, off you go, and you're like, OK, we've got to <laughs> show people now. I hope <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And John and the rest of the creative team, there was never a question really about gender being an issue with Jiminy. There's, there's, there are so few female characters in the original Disney movie. I think there's just the fairy, actually, the more I think about it. Yes. It's just yeah. the blue fairy, and she comes in and is very ethereal and very 19... 40s it came out, late 30s. No, uh, you know she's very of that time, very moralistic, and she leaves. And so John um, and uh, Dennis, the writer, were really keen to have some much, much uh, stronger female presence in the show, um, as well as the Blue Fairy. And actually, Jiminy just immediately presented herself uh, as being a really, <laughs> as being a really great candidate for it. Um, Audrey has extreme. She's too. Uh, uh, modest to say it's why I will say she's got very good comic timing and she's an amazing <laughs> singer not as good comic timing in real no, life no. but on stage on stage it's a lot better um, and so these two kind of work their magic with this bit of cardboard and plastic bottle um, and yeah the sort of go ahead for the puppet was given um, so probably four or five months later so the, the prototype was December 2016 yes, yes. yes. Um, and so probably May, April time, 2017, um, uh, we started to think about what um, she might look like. Googling crickets, I had no idea there were so many uh, different kinds of crickets. They have some freaky looking things, like camouflaged ones, ones that look like hideous aliens. Um, I quite like the sort of top left one that looks like it is standing on its back legs. Um, and from those kind of things, it was like, oh yeah, her knees should point forwards. They shouldn't sort of point back like a real crickets because it's a bit too it's a bit too sci-fi kind of weirdy let's try and make her a bit relatable so i kind of yeah started to draw uh she's sort of four heads high this one a sort of more insecty looking uh cricket with the kind of slight anthropomorphic human sort of layout um, of the disney film um and it just looked it just looked too sci-fi it didn't feel it felt a bit like um District 9, that movie where people start turning into the shrimp uh, aliens, it felt a bit like that, a bit sort of too, I don't know, yeah, a bit, just a bit too science experimenty. Um, and so uh, the, um, John, the director, and Bob Crowley, uh, who designed the set and costumes and co-designed uh, the puppets with me, he just said, don't go too far from what you've got. What you had really worked. Don't sort of over-engineer it. And so we kept a nod to the bottle. And her body is sort of a kind of <laughs> upside down apothecary bottle kind of shape with these sort of sections in it to give her kind of thing, um, sort of exoskeleton kind of shape. Um, and yeah, all of her limbs, I just kind of went more with kind of curves or thinking about her having little sleeves that look like sort of exoskeleton. They're so segmented, but kind of thought, oh, they look like little sleeves or little cuffs. Um, or if her legs are so kind of curvy going in different directions and it gives her a kind of rounded sort of friendly vibe, but still sort of creates insect kind of feeling. Um, and yeah, the head proportion's a bit bigger by now. And um, thinking about how the joints would work, she's got elastic in her legs that you'll see, which means she's very springy. Um, but this was the, sorry, this was the sort of blueprint that we ended up, uh, that I gave to the makers. So you do a sort of side profile and a front profile, and then this was blown up to a, a exact scale. Um, and then um, 
uh, this amazing maker, uh, Roy, um, started to carve her. Um, so we carved all the elements uh, out of blue styrofoam. It's quite rigid. Um, it's a bit like polystyrene, but it doesn't sort of flake away. And you can take molds from it. It's quite good and sturdy. Um, so we started sculpting the head. This was probably about the third test of the head. I got really pedantic about the shape of eyes and how jowly she was, things like that. Um, but yeah, I took a few kind of sculpts of the head. Um, eyebrow, with her eyebrows made it look too angry, um, various things like that. Um, so her head was sculpted in foam, hands were sculpted in foam, and they were covered and uh, made moulds of, because um, we knew we wanted more than one puppet for the show. The, the puppet gets quite a long workout. She's probably the puppet that's on stage the most in the show, right? Yeah, that or Geppetto. Yeah, so yeah. Between them probably share. Although off. Geppetto's not jumping around as much as that's you guys do. <laughs> um, so, that, so we knew we wanted, wanted more than one, um, and if things broke, then it's great to have a means of sort of just making another arm or a leg. So moulding her and being able to make uh, duplicates felt really valuable. Which was very um, useful in the yeah. rehearsal oh, process. Yeah. yeah, go on, what happened in the rehearsal process? <laughs> so we were doing a run, I think it was our first run, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a moment when the fo fox um, attempts to kill Jiminy with an axe, but uh, in doing so, oh, no. sorry, no. in doing so, <laughs> anyway. You have to know now. But, well, in doing so, it chops uh, his own uh, tail off. Uh, and the actor, David Langham, who plays the fox, <laughs> did it with such gusto and had been given a new, uh, a new axe. <laughs> that was still a prop, but still, still a quite prop, heavy. very heavy. <laughs> and he went with such force and conviction and um, chopped one of her leg off. But I didn't notice <laughs> so the reaction because so the... I was in the moment. Mm -hmm. The reaction of the well, the audience, the the, the, the people, the, exi the creatives were just, oh my god, what's happened? What's happened? And I just wow, so they're very into the the scene. <laughs> they're I, so think, strong. I think between us, we were absolutely mortified, and we sort of went over to Toby and went, it's right, we've got spares. We've got. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it's like a pit stop. You can literally sort of go, leg goes on, leg goes off. Um, but we, uh, but, you know, so. Uh, axe attacks aside, uh, we knew that she was going to have some wear and tear in the show. So her legs and arms and hands are all um, moulded uh, in fast cast, which is sort of crazy resistant. You can throw it on the floor; it doesn't shatter. Feels quite, um, feels quite sort of, uh, sort of like porcelain. It feels like sort of quite a dense kind of china. Um, and we filled it with this crazy expanding stuff, that's sort of like glass bubbles. So actually, she is sort of like an aero inside, like she's sort of aerated with this very solid outside, um, um, which, create, which is massively um, resistant. And then um, her head and her body are um, fiberglass uh, from mold, so she can really kind of take a knock. Um, uh, but yeah, so yeah, there's an, uh, all of her numerous arms and her sort of legs and feet coming together. Um, and so by the time we got to rehearsals, we did a, a week of puppet training, didn't we, uh, prior to kind of full-time rehearsals with the rest of the company. Because um, in the show, we've got five puppets in total. Jiminy, mm -hmm. Geppetto, Blue Fairy, Stromboli, Coachman. Oh, and the whale, six. The whale is enormous. Um, but yeah, so we, we had some, uh, a week of puppet training so that the people working in teams of two or three uh, or four could work together uh, to, to animate the characters. And um, so throughout rehearsals, we had very nearly the finished Jiminy, which is great because it means you can sort of road test things. If there's any alterations to handles or grip tape, um, various things that you can kind of keep adding and playing with. Um, and so, yeah, we did a majority of rehearsals with, uh, with one of our two Jiminy's in kind of unfinished form. Um, uh, yeah, getting up to hijinks and kind of beginning to find their kind of uh, duet on this uh, puppet together. Um, so uh, lots of questions were being bandied around about what her finish would be, and it felt quite nice uh, to sort of give her a slight fantastical quality. So in, um, in the Disney movie, Jiminy turns up at the beginning, and he's just there, and he's wearing clothes. He happens upon Geppetto's workshop, and the Blue Fairy says, you're Pinocchio's conscience, and the story continues. And in Dennis's script, um, uh, the Blue Fairy turns a sort of real cricket, a real cricket, uh, which on stage is kind of mimed, and people see it jumping around, and there's a sound effect. She transforms a kind of actual cricket into a bigger, more kind of humanoid uh, cricket, which is our puppet. And so to give her this sort of fantastical kind of quality, um, we began to look at other in uh, insects that had kind of fantastical wing colors, shell colors. And so this is a, a, a jewel beetle that come in all sorts of sh uh, colors and, and shapes and sizes. And yeah, this sort of green that sort of turns blue in places or that turns red, um, just thought was really brilliant, give her a real kind of cosmic sort of sheen. 
Um, as you can see, the final puppet doesn't have this, so there is a story to tell. Um, so, but we researched this amazing paint called flip-flop paint that's used a lot on motorbikes and on cars, and it does shift. So as it's the kind of shadowier side is a different color to the side that's in direct light, we were like, brilliant, she's going to look amazing. Yeah, it's kind of an expensive paint. Yeah, it takes 12 different coats of spray, and it takes four weeks. Whatever, but we'll do it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Created some really fancy concept art. Everyone really loved it. Great, brilliant. <laughs> puppet, puppet arrived. Oh my God, it's like Christmas. It looks amazing. Oh, and they put red on the bottom of one bit. Oh, she, gosh, it's going to look brilliant. Oh, let's, yeah, let's thread it together. Yeah. Oh, God, it looks great. It's like Iron Man, but a bug. And oh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, let's put it on stage. Oh. <laughs> it was so disappointing. Um, it was the first day of technical rehearsals. So we were ooh, five days in tech. Five days in tech. So you have rehearsals in a rehearsal room, and then you go into technical rehearsals where you're on stage. And yes, the cast is still kind of rehearsing, but it's more about adapting to the space, putting lighting, putting sound. There's a lot of illusions in Pinocchio, there's some flying. Um, so there was a lot of kind of technical things to put in place. And Jiminy just sort of wasn't a worry until she turns up under the table, and all you can see is Audrey staring into some sort of... Which is a nice thing. A sort of black VW Beetle <laughs> that she's holding. I don't know, yeah. She didn't reflect light at all. She didn't reflect any light. She sort of absorbed it. All the darker tones kind of came out. Um, she sort of just looked like she was always in shadow. And, you know, people who, who've seen the show comment on how brilliant it is being able to see Audrey and James do their thing and how they relate to the puppet. Um, but ultimately, if you can't see the puppet in darkness uh, and you can see the puppeteer staring at nothing, uh, we're kind of not doing our jobs right. Um, so frantic on my phone, image searching, different kinds of cricket, brighter color palettes. Um, uh, things that could be really zingy. Um, there's not a lot of set in Pinocchio. It very happen very often. Jiminy is performed on a sort of dark canvas. Um, so the fact that she could be quite bright would really help uh, show her kind of silhouette um, and all the kind of detail that you guys were doing that you just couldn't see with the shinier, darker puppet. Um, some crazy bright green fellas. Um, getting the old Pantone app out, going through, <laughs> comparing, um, finding the right kind of tone. Because there's a weird thing, you know, it strayed into kind of acid trip, crazy neon green too easily. And it was quite interesting to find the kind of very bright lime kind of um, uh, shade that would kind of work and still feel natural without being too kind of cosmic. Um, got my color and pencils out on my tech desk while we're still carrying on with the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you only had three days or something like this, didn't you? Before we had the photo shoot yeah. um, on, on that Wednesday. And I think that was the Saturday yeah. when we we it, told <laughs> it was Jiminy. it was mad so because we had two puppets yeah thank you that's worth saying we had two puppets and one of them had been sprayed and this other one had been sent to this amazing custom motorcyclist to start and so when, as soon as we saw this i was like get him on the phone <laughs> stop him <laughs> then we called up and he'd brilliantly he'd sanded her down he primed her she was totally ready for painting and he hadn't started the motorbike paint which was perfect um, so we were like, you've done a great job. We just don't want to proceed any further. <laughs> um, so he sent it back brilliantly. And yeah, sitting in tech, trying out, does she have green highlights? Does she have yellow highlights? Does she have spots? Does she have stripes? And trying out different combinations, settling on, on this palette. Um, and uh, uh, brilliantly, um, Daisy, who is the puppet supervisor on the project, um, Daisy Beatty, she's amazing. She's got many, many skills. And Lara, who's from the National Theatre Props Workshop, who's an amazing painter. They just set to work priming and painting, um, painting her ready for, yeah, the dress rehearsal, which is um, always where the production photos are taken for shows, really, which on really design-heavy shows, you're like, that's crazy. The show's not even, you know, it, we haven't got, got it on its feet fully yet. But it's, it's when it's needed for press and for kind of publicity. So um, she had to be ready for that date. And I kind of wanted to get used to seeing her and whether we needed to change the color any further. Um, so it was like a sort of nail bar going on uh, in the props department of, yeah, painting all these little hands, going into, going into quite a lot of detail, a lot of shading, trying to pick up all the contours in her. Um, we added a little kind of um, Swarovski crystal to her eye um, to uh, slightly give her a pupil. I'm a big fan in puppets of not having a fixed sort of dot um, because actually it means that the puppet is always looking in one fixed place. Um, and, then, and if you're slightly out, it's very, very unforgiving. And because Jiminy is on the floor a lot of the time and you're looking up, you sort of need the freedom to go, oh, if her nose is looking in that direction, she's looking up there. Um, but it's more fun for the audience to kind of fill in the blanks and imagine what her eyes are doing. Um, and so it felt like the white little crystal on top of the orange just gives her a little kind of accent as to where her kind of direction is without being too kind of staring, kind of Muppet eyed, kind of black on, on white. Um, and so we ended up with her as she is now, 
a very lime green, bright, playful self. Um, and yeah, I suppose you should talk next about a little bit about how we brought her to life. We, I mean you, I just hung out and yeah. shouted at you. Watched and judged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. Um, what, uh, is it worth saying a little bit about, I don't know, public experience before or how you felt as you trained uh, what you trained in originally and then how that's kind of progressed into the weird yeah. world of puppetry? Would you like me to go first? Yeah, go Great. First. Um, well, I, I trained in uh, musical theatre predominantly and my first sort of job out of drama school was Les Miserables in the West End and it was amazing. Uh, and then my second job, I luckily met Toby uh, and it was on The Light Princess at the National Theatre and it was my first real experience of um, puppetry in any form. I'd, you know, I'd sort of watched The Muppets and loved it, obviously. Who doesn't? Um, but it, it was a real uh, baptism of fire because we had a lot of different moving puppets in, the, in that show. Uh, it was very, uh, very much like Jiminy. There, there'd be different aspects going on all the time. Um, and I learned a lot and I learned very quickly on that job. Um, and then I sort of got the bug for it forgive the pun, um, for just sort of picking up an, uh, an object of that sort of ilk and, and, and trying to bring it to life. And there's a real um, uh, sort of grati gratification of being able to serve something that's beyond you with other people at one time. Um, and I feel like that's something probably we share as all puppeteers is making something bigger than you. And I think that's sort of an ensemble nature anyway, and that's sort of what I trained in. Um, and then from there, I just didn't stop. I just, I think I've done puppetry jobs ever since. And it's been re a real pleasure to do it because it's such a joy. And you get to do so many different types of shows and work in different places. We did another show in Manchester at the Royal Exchange, which is in the round, which is just fantastic. And we took a real show that was sort of, you know, Audrey too is sort of stuck in most parts, uh, sort of at the back of the stage, but because we we're in the round, we sort of had to change it up. And that was, that was quite fun, doing something new. Not Audrey 2. Not Audrey 2, uh, not this Audrey. The, the big part. plant from Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And then, uh, obviously... Uh, Who's named after me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A few years later, uh, Pinocchio comes around in a workshop and it just took off from there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Well, I, I also trained in music theatre. Uh, and I, I find it very um, funny when Toby mentions that he wanted to work with uh, experienced puppeteers because I'm, I wasn't one of them. I mean, I have worked in the past with Toby a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had mm -hmm. the odd experience with a puppet for two or three minutes in the show and then moved away from the puppet and, and then just put it, down <laughs> just put it a bit, yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. done now. <laughs> uh, so when Toby called me and said, would you like to be part of the research and development for, for, for Pinocchio playing Jiminy, it was, uh, and with the line, we don't know yet if it's going to be a puppet and an actor, or, or an actor, the nine weeks that we had for the rehearsals of Pinocchio were, uh, were, were, were the training. And actually, I, I believe that regardless of how much experience we've had, um, every puppet is a new one. Absolutely. You will, totally you will uh, have to figure out the language of the, pu the puppet that you, that, you, that you are with. So I, uh, James and I, well, maybe not you because you also do, but like I uh, puppeteer Jiminy, but I would never be able to puppeteer Geppetto or the Blue Fairy because it's a complete different um, instrument. Mm. Um, it took me the nine weeks to learn how to, 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 to play with her and be happy. Uh, she was very heavy. She's not heavy, but she was heavy for me at the very beginning. So uh, Anything is heavy if you're holding it mid-height out for 10, yeah. 15 minutes at a time. You know, you could hold a, a bag of, sh or you could hold your iPhone out and after a while be like... Yeah, no, it is it's surprising. Still? So um, you, you would, you know, it, there would be a lot of mm. do the scene once and then, okay, put Jiminy aside, relax the, the, the muscles, then maybe do it with your own body just to have a feeling of what it is that you're trying to portray mm. and uh, at first we used to do that quite a lot yes and then there was one afternoon where we had some children coming over to see some of the rehearsals that we'd done because it was just to see if if the, the children responded to w what we were doing and Don Tiffany the director asked me to um, lead the warm-up with Jiminy so we arrived and it was our first time improvising with, with her yeah. and I think it opened the door for us to understand that actually we had more control than we thought we could play more than we could and then afterwards it, it really was for yeah. me like an, uh, uh, an overnight thing after this rehearsal or this the, the leading of the warm-up suddenly we could play. Yeah I think you, there's certain points in a rehearsal process for puppeteers where there's certain benchmark moments where 
you first get it and it's absolutely foreign and you hate it. Mm. No matter what it is, it doesn't matter how well, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. But, it, but it, you do yeah. and you go you, because, uh, because you want to end gain and you always want to get to the final mm. and product. And you're blocked by the incapacity. And then there's a few yeah. moments where you sort of get there and that was definitely one of those moments where you suddenly click and you go, do you know what, we, the possibilities are now endless for yes. us. We can sort of mm. go anywhere with this puppet, but it takes a long time to get there. And we're fortunate with the National that they gave us such a long period of rehearsal mm. to understand the puppet, to get to know it. And also, it's not just full nine weeks on that one puppet. There, there's so much more going on in the yes. room. You know, we'll be dancing in the morning or learning a song in the afternoon, and then we get an hour mm. at the end of the day to play with Jiminy. And at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always at the end of Which the is, day. Yeah, and you're sort of so tired, you're like, I don't <laughs> yes. know if I can do anything else. But even, um, even from the outside, you know, as, as, a, as a director of the puppets, you start off very much talking to James and ordering, going, okay, so it's this, and if you hold it there, maybe that's easier, and where's the tension, how can we help that move? And you are sort of by the end going, okay, can Jiminy jump up and do, you end up sort of talking about Jiminy like she's a character in the room, which she is, she's another performer in the room. And actually when, you know, it was so exciting seeing after that warm up, you guys being able to improvise and we did put the puppet down, you know, there were times when if a move was tricky or you want to, she's such a small puppet on such a big stage, her movements had to be quite, um, kind of concise, very sort of crystallized, so that her whole body is kind of <gasps> reacting to the same kind of state of tension. Um, and very often, uh, do you like that? Yeah, That's good. Um, <laughs> uh, wasted, wasted in puppetry. Um, that, um, that uh, you know, Audrey would have a go, James would have a go, and we'd sort of see how, that how it was embodied in them and then put that in the puppet. And that process sort of gradually decreased as their thinking went more and more into kind of what the puppet could do, what, what was the puppet's version of yeah. that emotion. Yeah. I think an important thing for us as well, we, we live in sort of a box about this big on stage together uh, as two actors or uh, puppeteers. So it's about getting used to that sort of uh, relationship with each other. Mm. And as well, as well as we know each other, it's about sort of bit, literally being able to lean on your partner at certain points. Uh, and, be, and knowing that when I barge into Audrey, it's not because I want her to move out of the way, it's because that's the only way my body can get to that certain place. Mm. Um, and that's a real great relationship that we built over the nine weeks. And going forward, teamwork, the teamwork involved in it is really, it has to be sort of in that box. If it's anywhere outside there, as soon as you sort of have airs and graces about it, you're done. In September, if I was to take one step to the left when we'd said that uh, we were supposed to go to the right, it would go, yeah, it would go completely wrong. mental. Yeah. You know, what, what, what are you doing? And We'd now, have to reassess and take exactly. about an hour going, why did you go left? And I was, I was obviously It was, it was right. obviously right here. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, when I forget my words on stage and I start mini improvising or blocking, and, well, James just laughs and, and just completely go, <laughs> goes, goes with me. I don't completely <laughs> laugh, but yes, yeah, it, is, it is fun. <laughs> But it is, it's such a strange thing, thinking in a group of two, three, four, as one brain, it's a massive um, test of sort of, of kind of generosity on stage, of kind of really good acting. Everything I, you know, as somebody who studied puppetry and trained in puppetry, the more I kind of hear about other kind of people's acting training or, or work with more actors and directors, kind of great puppetry and great acting are kind of the same in that you're kind of leaving room for the audience to project their own experiences and emotions on your performance. You're not kind of selling it so much that you're kind of offended by it. Um, and there's something really selfless about puppetry, not only because you're, you're telling people to look at this inanimate thing, not at you, but at the same time, you kind of have to take responsibility for your bit of the puppet, then your bit of the puppet in relation to the other person's bit of the puppet, then how that puppet relates to another character opposite. It, you'll sort of feel the vision goes, and your peripheral vision kind of feels like a muscle by the end that you've yeah. really kind of worked. Um, and it's just, yeah, very exciting making decisions together. I, I was um, one of the puppeteers in the original production of War Horse, um, and uh, you work in a team of three on the horses together. And one night we had a light explode above us um, uh, in the um, sort of rig of the theater. Um, like a massively loud bang in a really quiet, calm, pastoral kind of moment, and the horse is just really relaxed. This huge bang happened, and more for us, because it could have been something huge falling on us. None of us as puppeteers went <laughs> and looked up. The horse went <laughs> and we're spooked because you're kind of in this weird state together. You're in this kind of weird sort of meditative kind of state going, okay, yeah, we're listening to each other. If the feet give me a signal, I'll do something, but otherwise I'll be looking. Or, and when you're in that kind of state, you're, you're kind of taught to react to any outside stimulus together. And so the fact that the horse reacted to an exploding light and none of us thought about our own lives and looked <laughs> upwards um, was, was hilarious and bizarre. Um, so, shall we give Jimmy a bit of a demo and talk about some yes. principles? Yeah, absolutely. She wants yeah. her time. Yeah, she needs her time. She needs her stage time. <laughs> yes. Which puppet is this, Audrey? Which one? 
This is Tracy McJumpy. So we've got two puppets in the show, and to help distinguish <laughs> them, uh, Audrey has named them. We'll go on and see us. So this is Tracy McJumpy. And we have Brenda McLeapy, who's currently um, on rest. On rest in a spa. In a spa. Yes. <laughs> having a bar <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I'll do it this time. Don't worry, you go next. Part. So let's talk. Let's have a little talk about the mechanics of it as well. Actually, who mm -hmm. does? Who's doing what? Um, so. Audrey has got a rod uh, in the back of the body, which you can maybe show us if you still keep her in character. Uh, yeah, um, and uh, that rod is attached through her body with an elastic, and Audrey has a little trigger on that rod that means that she can raise her chin. <laughs> um, and then uh, in her right hand, Audrey's got two rods that go from Jiminy's arms, which she's holding sort of like kind of crazy reverse chopsticks. It's a thing that took a long, long time to uh, practice. <laughs> <laughs> Voice the face of experience. A long, long time to practice. And sort of trusting that you can sort of keep one posed while you move your finger to twist another one. She's got these lovely little wrist joints, or hand joints, that you can twist the stick and her hand goes palm, top, palm, top. Um, um, and so, yeah, it's a bit of a sort of uh, uh, multitasking challenge being on kind of the head and arms at the same time. Um, and then James is on the feet. Um, and, yeah, he's got little rods in the back. Um, and all of her leg joints are bungee. They've all got elastic running through them. So that Audrey can jump Jiminy by herself. By herself. Yeah, go on. <laughs> so she's kind of got enough kind of structure and bounce to do moments like that. But then James can join in and sync up for kind of bigger jumps or kind of crazier moves. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then her second set of arms are similarly bungeed so that she can, yeah, she gets very exasperated and says, I'm a cricket. Six! <laughs> Six! I'm not a... Spider? <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Um, uh, yeah, and so the two of them are always in kind of slight tension together as well, which again, the elastic of the legs really helps um, be in sort of slight um, tension with each other so that if Audrey makes a decision or James makes a decision, they can literally feel each other through the puppet. Um, <laughs> Um, and so three principles that I kind of use, um, the sort of core ones anyway, when directing puppetry. And um, the first one is focus. Um, and all of these kind of apply to the puppeteer and the puppet, really. But yeah, focus uh, for a puppet, where it's looking, tells you what it's interested in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck picking that up. <laughs> oh, nearly. Good work, good work. <laughs> um, so yeah, where a puppet's looking, basically tells you where the story um, is at. And as puppeteers, um, where they're looking tells us what the most important thing on stage to look at is. If they look, if they look away and look at, look at you guys, then there's three characters on stage. But as soon as they look at the puppet, they're immediately telling you to look at Jiminy. In the same way, in the <laughs> no pictures. Uh, in the same way that if I'm, you know, if I'm talking to you and I look at the door and go, <gasps> what are you all going to do? You're going to turn and look at the door. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're kind of pack animals who instinctively do that. And so the act of puppeteering, uh, or certainly kind of my preference of puppeteering, is to kind of give focus to the object. So the audience look at the object. Um, so that's focus. Um, second one uh, is uh, breath. Phew. I thought I'd seen something there. Was <laughs> so, is, so if we go and watch a play, if we go and watch Benedict Cumberbatch in Hamlet, I'm pretty sure, yeah, you like Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you wouldn't go home and go, and I saw Benedict Cumberbatch breathing. Like, his breathing was amazing. I mean, you might do. That might be your thing. I don't know. Um, but with puppets, it's sort of fundamental that the audience have to believe that they're alive before they can do anything else, before they can learn about the character or the reactions or the emotional range or its physicality. You sort of have to start playing the game with your audience. And the simplest way of doing that is through breath. Um, it's by showing her breathing um, uh, in the puppet and by Audrey vocalizing it. And whilst James isn't vocalizing the breath per se for the audience to hear, he's on the same kind of breath wavelength with her so that you're in the kind of same state of tension. Um, and so that way, breath becomes a really useful toolkit for the two of them to check in with each other or, or do a little prep breath before they do a big move or various little bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. It allows a kind of synchronicity. Um, the third one uh, is uh, weight, um, which, I mean, you're not, you're not heavy. OK, thank you. Um, uh, is, um, is, I mean, the simplest way of putting it, muscles versus gravity, in that without any uh, weight or muscularity, if Jiminy jumps, she's just sort of lifting off. Well, that was too good. You did it with one. Go on. 
<laughs> too, wait. Uh. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. But with uh, our muscles versus gravity, there's kind of more of a prep. Go on, do you try and give us it again? And, and you know, it's as simple as that. You're kind of giving the puppet our physics, essentially, because a puppet can do anything. It can fly. It can. It can explode apart. I've done that with some puppets. <laughs> but with Jiminy, we do little things. She slightly suspends her gravity sometimes if she's shouting stop or she does stop. <laughs> um, but generally, for the audience to sympathise and relate to the character, we're giving the, we're giving them, uh, giving the puppet uh, our physics. So we, we feel it's kind of truth and it's um, reality. Um, and I suppose, wait for the puppeteer. My, uh, my kind of preference is that the puppeteer, you never see their muscles working before the puppet. So that if Jiminy walks to the edge of the table, they get to their full stretch before then they have to uh, tilt and move as well. Yeah, you see, so James only gets up at the last second. If, if Jiminy was to walk to the edge of the table and the first thing you saw was James do that, you'd start to second guess what she's going to do. And there's, there's a big thing about putting the audience in the brain of the puppet by letting the puppet instigate um, all of the movements. Um, should we give them a bit of repertoire, a bit of scene? Um, I'll stand in for everybody else in the scene and be a bit of an eyeline by standing here. Um, and you can watch her do her thing. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? Wait, who are you? Why am I talking? <laughs> Is it cold in here? Oh, yes, I think it's cold in here. Mm -hmm. Is this my voice? Well, it's a bit high, isn't it? <gasps> Have I got a throat infection? Oh, I do feel a bit weird. <gasps> Maybe I'm coming down with something. <laughs> Am I coming down with something? I think I'm coming down with something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'm coming down with something. <laughs> this table is filthy. <laughs> Why is that window open? Do you have any idea how much the temperature drops at night? I mean, has no one here heard of streptococcal pharyngitis? <sighs> right. So, in my first official act as your conscience, I declare that it is time for bed. What? I said it's time for bed. Oh, look! You heard the lady. I'm your conscience, which means I know it's best. And I am telling you that it is time for bed! <laughs> right. Well, I'm off then. Nice. Very good, guys. Very good, very good, very good. Can I a little stand back? <laughs> So yeah, so uh, the char character of Jiminy in the show is slightly more kind of hypochondriac, slightly more OCD, slightly more, forgive me, annoying sort of sibling to Pinocchio than mm -hmm. the sort of wiser, older guardian sort of Yoda vibe that he is in the, um, in the animated film. So it's been really fun finding, letting that character kind of develop and finding your version of Jiminy yeah. um, um, throughout rehearsal. Yeah, because also the puppet tells us slightly more about the character than sometimes the writing can, mm. because it can only do X or Y which leads us to do certain things, or it can do a myriad of different things, mm. and it means that the possibilities are endless and we shouldn't just be honed in to what, what's on the script sometimes. Mm -hmm. And because she's turned from a real cricket into our kind of anthropomorphic cricket, um, her, ch uh, well, her chirruping, what that, what that transition is from thingy. Chirrup. So she starts as a cricket. <laughs> so she becomes really kind of angsty. And so every so often her kind of cricketism sort of kicks in, a bit like a sort of tick. Uh, we sort of gave her this kind of like little like leg <laughs> stamp. Shut up! Yeah, 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 yeah. See? <laughs> they don't need a puppet, they're in sync. <laughs> Practically married. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so it was really interesting finding how her kind of crickettiness uh, uh, kicks in at kind of moments of stress or tension. Um, but yeah, that is, that is how we brought Jiminy Cricket uh, to life in Pinocchio. What is the difference between bringing puppetry to stage versus bringing to screen? Kind of what's the different processes that you would go through for that? We have a lot more prep time in theatre <laughs> than in screen. Um, certainly with sort of puppetry and TV and film that I've done, you, you, there's a lot of making time, but actually the sort of development and having the, the time on set to practice things, it's very much on the day. You find something, you work together, and it's kind of on screen doing its thing. Um, whereas, yeah, on Pinocchio we had nine weeks rehearsal, plus workshop time yeah. before that. 
um, it feels like you're kind of slightly chipping away and growing and developing it, whereas in film it's very much like, this is the here, it's on the day, let's do it. And very often with um, film and TV puppetry, you're, you're only a part of the picture, it's going to be filled in with CGI, or it's going to have a sort of other element to it, or the puppeteers will be taken away. There's always kind of another process, whereas it feels like, so, no, certainly in theatre, it's very much like you're building towards yeah, that yeah. finished thing as a quite a sort of long-term goal. And also, once you, sh once you film, you've filmed it and then you move on, whereas we've been performing since early December, and literally an hour ago, we were talking to Toby about this new idea that we, you know, we could <laughs> add something yeah. at the end of the show. Mm. Um, we are way ahead of where we were in December. Yeah, yeah, already. totally. So and it's, it's, and it's I constant. Yeah, I suppose it's like you say, it's the filling in the gaps. Mm. Uh, whereas with stage, it's got to be ready to go. It's, it's got to be film ready, as it were, every night for X amount of months. Mm. Uh, whereas with film, you can sort of take it back, edit it, someone else can fill in the gaps for mm -hmm. you. We sort of have to do it all. Mm. That's why we're so good. We are. Yeah. Wow. And modest. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Um, I was just thinking about what it must have taken to choreograph every <laughs> second of that scene, that short scene you just did. And I wondered if you could talk a little bit about how you find your path through that. You know, are there moments that you kind of mentally map and go, okay, so we want that movement, that movement, that movement, that movement, and you connect them all up? Or is it a bit more fluid? Like, how do you find your way through that? It must just take so long. <laughs> well, today was already a bit of a mashup and improvisation on the theme, because yeah. I'm usually on the table the other way around. Um, um, having said that, yes, it is still choreographed every night. Yeah, um, it's a certain amount of being choreographed and there's also got to be fluidity because it's a live theatre project. Mm. Uh, if you were just rigid and stuck in what you do, I, th I feel like the only, the, per the only thing that would suffer would be the puppetry. Mm. Um, we, we have quite a good dynamic in that sense as I like to keep the structure and Audrey will not keep the structure. <laughs> I, um, I would like to. Uh, <laughs> but because of, uh, Audrey's also got about three balls to juggle and I've only got one, so sh moments can get lost, or, uh, but it's my job to follow and listen as much as possible. Mm. And Audrey's job is to offer up different situations. And between the two of us, we can get through a show pretty competently now. Yeah. Um, but that takes time to develop. Mm. Um, but, but, it, but there are earmarks in the script mm. that we go, well, these are the lines we've got to say, and that's usually how we say them. Mm. Um, but it can be a bit more fluid. And I think it's, uh, it, it comes back to uh, what we were saying earlier. In, in the early days, it was very important for us to follow said choreography. And now we have a bit more, more, more freedom. And it will also be a tell um, on whether we are having a good show or not. <laughs> Sometimes we are very, very in tune and it's we listen to now. each other. No, no, but, and, yeah. and we'll, yeah. we'll, you'll, you'll find moments where you can go, wow, we improvised that bit because something had gone wrong. But we, we were so together mm. that it was seamless. Whereas other moments, um, you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be ahead or I'll be behind or the, mm. the, you'll feel slightly disconnected. It never happens. Yeah. Don't worry. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. Well, what it, I think that's interesting though is having the script first, certainly from the out, like as an outsider, finding the, the, the kind of character with you guys, you sort of look for the changes in emotional tension. Mm. And with her, it was sort of about finding what kind of shapes would read, given that for people at the back of the auditorium, she's probably a little green speck, sort of that big, no offense. And um, uh, it sort of became about sort of using those as kind of chapter headings, new, cha new changes of thought, things like that, where the kind of sort of, I don't know, the sort of flight plan map of her emotionally is in that scene, and having that as a kind of structure. We're often with puppetry, um, you end up sort of saying there's a kind of visual script of moves that you know are the kind of lines, I guess, that the puppet has to go through, but how you say them in what temperature, in what um, emotion, what frequency, yeah, dynamic, is sort of always up for grabs. Um, I suppose I'm always keen, and these guys do it amazingly, all the puppeteers on Pinocchio do it amazingly, of not filling in uh, any intentional gaps, because pauses are really clear, as you would have seen, you know, if she looks at something, there's a kind of little moment for you all to clock that she's looking, or maybe make sense of what she thinks of it. And actually with puppetry, all those kind of tiny gaps, the more you do something, those tiny gaps feel massive. You feel like you're kind of, you're giving dead air time. And so very often puppets start to go quite hyper or kind of overact because other bits start to tune in. And there's a real discipline in going, actually those pauses or little kind of moments where you just see breath are all there for the audience to kind of read in and apply understanding and movement and meaning. And if they're taken away, 
you're kind of bombarding the audience with information. So it feels like quite a good discipline to kind of keep that sense of, of play whilst having a sort of outside perspective on what you guys would be thinking of what they're doing. Yeah. It's a weird thing, you're sort of, your, when you're a puppeteer, you are actor and your own director at the same time. You have to sort of develop your own outside eye, which is a strange thing, but a really satisfying thing when it, it kicks really in. It really is, especially when you have someone like Toby here who is an amazing director because he knows what he wants, but he's also very good at saying, you know, when I come with a problem going out in the early days, how do I hold her or how do I, you know, do this particular movement because I don't know how to physically do it. And he's like, just work it out. <laughs> you'll work figure it out. It out. No, but meaning no. you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll, and it's the best way to do it because mm. then we do find our way of doing it. And he's not going to be very prescriptive about when she needs to breathe or turn, to turn right. And so yeah. you, it's, it, then Jiminy becomes our own Yeah, and ultimately character. it's about storytelling and Toby is a very good storyteller yeah. and that's helpful when you're being directed in puppetry that it's very clearly about the, about the story mm. rather than anything else because you can get I mean we could do some amazing tricks with Jiminy but it wouldn't it's help the story that, yeah. at all and it's funny because in rehearsals at the beginning very often if Audrey was like how, how would this happen I'd sort of go well let's see and kind of do it and she'd go god how can you do that how can you His move hands this thing like three times I've as got, big as mine yeah that's true <laughs> um, but you know and you'd be like oh well it's sort of maybe it's this maybe it's that you make a suggestion by halfway through rehearsals they are masters of it and I'd go well let me give it a go uh, no I don't know I don't know anymore <laughs> it is sort of this weird thing of kind of it's it's you learn how to work with this object so kind of um, tactilely, it, it, they are really our puppets are more like music, musical instruments than like props. I, whenever I go into a new project, I'm always, when people want to use puppetry, I'm always like, solve who the puppeteers are first, then you'll know what the kind of world is. If you're, who are the people that are invisible on, in your aesthetic? Um, and then second of all, think of them as musical instruments because they're expensive, uh, in man hours to make, they need stands, they you know need fine tuning, need someone to look after them. We've got a puppet technician full time on the show whose job it is to just look after the puppets. Um, amazing guy, Will. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it's really interesting how sort of bespoke and the kind of relationship that you kind of bond you have yeah, with this kind of object. Yeah. Does anyone else? Me. Okay, you go. Hi. Um, can you talk just a little bit more about how you guys work together so closely over such a long period of time. There's, like, there can't be many other jobs where you're so stuck to someone else for so long. So I'm really curious as to, is that just part of being a puppeteer? Or do you have to do specific exercises to get used to one another's movements? And it's, I think, I'll take this one just quickly, just because it's just on my head. Yeah. I, I, it's different with every puppet and it's different with every job. Um, and with every single person that you puppeteer with, uh, ultimately, you're all, everyone's got the same goal, which is always really great. And I think in any type of business, and crossover anywhere, if everyone's got the same goal and same aim, you're usually going to be on the same track. Um, the difficulty is always working with other people because, uh, you know, everyone has different needs, even though you're, you're aiming for the same thing. But I feel like, especially with, with our relationship, it's about understanding who we are as people first yeah. and then making sure that that serves the goal at the end of the day. Um, and sometimes we're selfless with that, uh, yourself certainly and, and myself. Uh, it's about letting go of who you are and going, right, okay, we can put that aside and let's just get on with the job. Um, it, it, but it can be difficult, it can be difficult, but I feel like creating a good relationship between us means that when we go on stage, we don't have to worry about that. We can just do the job and we've, if we've got concerns, we can speak to each other, there's no problems there. Being very open and honest about stuff is, is really important, I think. And, and you know, I think we are very fortunate because when you see potentially other people who are not in such a fortunate um, uh, relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 no, I think James and I, well, I'm very fortunate, so thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can be a little bit like Jiminy. I can be a bit angsty and, and stressed and, 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 and nervous. I'm going to use different words to say exactly the same thing. Um, whereas James is very good at, um, at, at calming situations yeah, and, yeah. and being laid back in a way. And I think that's what works. Uh, there are moments on stage when uh, it, it's, it's not physically dangerous, but it, I'm in a slightly precarious position. And people quite often um, tell me when after seeing the show how much they notice James 
being focused on me. I mean, of course, he he's on the puppet, but yeah. you, you, you can feel that he's there. He protects me. He's 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 aware. <laughs> no, you do. Okay. You know, <laughs> but, but but people people have yeah, noticed. Yeah, you know, yeah. and there are moments when he kind of he's just aware that maybe. And there's times where I want to push you. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are very fortunate, and because um, it, it, it could we could hate each other, I, and I guess it's in like in any. Um, job, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it is, it is very fortunate, but it's like any acting acting job. Very, very, very early on, on day one, the the, the creatives are going to be uh, working hard at making you feel comfortable within each other. Mm. We are literally all over each other on yeah. day one. Yeah. Hands but but also, it comes down to Toby's uh, choice of puppeteers and team, because uh, you know everybody personally, and like you say, you want the experience. But also, Toby knows everyone personally in a personal way as, as either friends or as colleagues he knows the type of temperament of people so I'm sure in the back of his head I can't speak for him but there is a moment where he goes oh, th that will work mm. that will work and that will work and not always will it come to but I imagine most of the time and also as you were saying earlier how you are very consistent yeah. and I'm not <laughs> um, it, it, no, we, it's a yeah, good marriage yeah, because yeah. then yeah. We, we find that um, the, the air around Jiminy um, which we gel we, we, we gel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's very often about kind of relinquishing control as well and sort of going, I trust that the other person's going to do that. So finding the sort of combinations of teams for these puppets in the show. We knew the, vo the people who were operating the heads and doing the voices were cast as those characters, but of the kind of squad of ooh, six, seven puppeteers, yeah. seven, eight puppeteers, um, it was up for grabs who was on which character. So very much a lot of the early rehearsals and the puppet training was sort of going, right, do we put a lot of the War Horse veterans with a really experienced uh, person who is in Lion King? Uh, do we put quite a few of the people who never touched a puppet before together so they all have those realizations together so that nobody's sort of going, guys, it's, it's like this. And actually, oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's how it was. And with these two, it was exactly that. I was like, Audrey is already great at Jiminy, has a lot of self-doubt, will be absolutely fantastic. James is a kind of, is just so organized and self-critical and consistent that actually the two of them together are kind of the, the, the yin to each other's yang. And so kind of watching Jiminy kind of come together in kind of form and throughout that whole process was, was just amazing. So Please join me in a massive round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.